Hello, welcome to SAFC Fan TV, uh, Thursday Night Live, here with me, Mike, and Jacob. How are you doing, Jacob? Not too bad, mate. Um, haven't been in long from work. Um, just uh, ready and um, pretty much excited. It's one of my favourite times of the week to talk about yeah. Sunday Day FC, despite it not being as great results-wise at this moment in time. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, Jack, how are you doing? You are our chief comment reader tonight, so bear that in mind each time I come to you. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to it. Hopefully, hopefully we uh, get a good show, plenty to talk about, as there always is with Sunderland. As Jacob's touched on, things aren't going too well, but uh, I'm sure we'll create some some interesting talking points. I'm sure uh, the club does that for us. We just follow along. <laughs> right, we will start. Well, first thing I'll mention is why are you both in blue? I feel really left out. <laughs> it, it was so fast. <laughs> I didn't get the memo. <laughs> I've got the first win at Southampton, I can remember in my lifetime, 2007 Easter weekend. Uh, nice. Edwards it was a lead but a screamer in this stuff at St Mary, so hopefully a, a good omen uh, to wear leading up to this weekend. I just I just picked it because I thought well we're going to be away, aren't we? And Southampton red and white, so I thought I would just go with blue spare at the moment. I just grabbed mm. the only clean one I could find. <laughs> <Whack into Right>. The <laughs> <laughs> right, Leicester City game. I know we're going to have to go over it. It is what it is, right? So. Um, Obviously, Dodds changed up the formation. Um, looked like we set up when we set up against Leeds, that kind of thing. Uh, for me, I was annoyed he dropped Mundell. Um, it's, it's, his decisions and choices make me think he had more of a say in what Beal had than he did. So we'll go to you first, Jack. What did you think of the game? Well, it was disappointing. I think, you know, first 20 minutes, they were absolutely all over us, weren't they? Um they were playing it, you know, uh, uh, on on another level. The speed was far too good for us. They were getting the creative players on the ball, knocking it around, and we couldn't get near them. Um, they had a couple of openings, but I said to my mate, I said, there's a goal coming. You could just see Leicester scoring. And um, the annoying thing from my perspective is, given the fact that they got in behind us a few times and they were playing really good football, the annoying thing is that we conceded from a set play. And it's just such a sloppy goal to concede, you know, the decent save by Patterson, but... Jamie Vardy's made a career out of it, hasn't he? Johnny on the spot gets the header in, and then you you think, and then it's going to be a route. But luckily, we sort of weathered the storm a little bit. Uh, got to half time, and then second half we were we were better. I mean, I think the word that um, Mike Dodds used was, was it sensational second half. I think he said I wouldn't quite I wouldn't quite go that far. I think he said a little bit of a uh, little bit over the top, but I did think we were improved. I did think we uh, we we really had them. Had them on the ropes the last 15 or 20 minutes, didn't we? And on another day, we might have nicked a point. The fantastic shot from Hume nearly went in. Um, yeah. And yeah, one or two other openings, debatable penalty decision, which I'm sure we'll come on to as well. So really, decent performance, but it's another loss. And it's frustrating because that was probably the best we've played in the five defeats. But we picked the best team in the league to play against like that. Had we played against that like Huddersfield, you know, we probably would have got something from the game. So yeah, still disappointing. Yeah. Uh, Jacob, were you at the game? How did you find it? I uh, couldn't make it up for that one, unfortunately. No. Um, I watched it down um, back in London. Um, my my take, I mean, the first 45 minutes, particularly how we started the game, we sat way too deep. We invited too much pressure in terms of uh, the way Dodds wanted to set up. But I think that was similar to how he set us up when he first took charge for those interim games he well he had his interim manager um i think it was december last year after mowbray left he wanted to go with i think a back three or a back five whatever you call it and yeah against um a team with bags of ex experience at premier league level and there it was it was too much like jack said it was you could see a goal was coming in the first 20 minutes i mean they were all over all over us completely or he probably um, if it wasn't for Anthony Patterson, who I thought was, um, you had one of his better displays on Tuesday night, uh, the game could have been completely out of sight um, yeah, come half definitely. an hour. But yeah, oh, Mike, you finished. I was just going to say, that he, he, he saved it from being 4-0 in the first 10 minutes, didn't he? 
yeah, very good performance. That double save was absolutely magnificent. Um, but second half, I was more encouraged. I think we we played with more width. I was impressed with Al Sheesh when he came on. Um, I thought he offered us um, something different in the final third. You know, um, the ability to take people on, uh, make through passes, and also get balls into the box as well, which we we tried to set up that way in the first 45. But the problem with Semedo is that he just didn't have the physicality uh, to cope with Leicester's back line with Connor Cody and F- uh, Fowers. I think mm-hmm. that's how you pronounce Fowers in there. And um, yeah, it, it, just, it wasn't working at all. Um, I was a little bit surprised that I thought Barr would have returned to the starting lineup on Tuesday. I thought he would have offered us a tad more creativity um, in the final third. Um, Mondo, um, he's still at that stage. He reminds me of when we first brought Jack Clark in. You know, it's, it's just a little bit of rawness right now. It's a tad um, inexperienced, but that will come over time. We're still in the development stage uh, with Mondo. Uh, Rig was brilliant, though, once again. You know, it just shows that how he's not been given a sniff in this side um, the last few months is is beyond belief. We've not really seen him since we last played Southampton in that 5-0 win. But <clears throat> overall, um, I'm... Um, happy with the second half display we showed hopefully we continue that and keep the good solid defensive shape that we did um going into Southampton at the weekend yeah you've already answered my next question which was what did you think of rig so jack that question is going to come to you what did you think of rig in that game i'll just come on to that in a second mike cuz i think we're trying to bring in some comments so <laughs> um so just Obviously, we encourage everybody to try and uh, try and comment, and um, if you've got any questions, we'll try and try and read them out. So today, this evening, we've got Stephen Clark, who says evening lads. Tam says evening lads. He's fuming. Conrad Tank and Colin Major and Mick Coleman are all saying hello, lads. As is Harley Jones. Uh, Jeanette, Jeanette, Jeanette Atkinson says, "Do I think Bar played well? Well, yes, I do a voice note uh, giving a, a review, and I did say Bar. I did actually mean Mundle. So well done on spotting that mistake." <laughs> um so um yeah um so uh Stephen Clark says thinks that thinks it all turned around when Job and Equa came off. Uh and Mick Coleman says robbed by a poor refereeing decision. I'm sure we will we will come on to that later on. Um but yeah, Mike Beale, um sorry, not Beale, Rig, uh Mike Beale, Be- uh, <gasps> Rig. Uh, I know, I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> uh Rig, no, he did uh he did really well when he came on. Uh and like Jacob says, it makes you wonder why he hasn't featured more. He got on the ball straight away and he just looks like he's going to be, he's going to be some player if he continues to develop. He's got a football brain, hasn't he? You can, you can see a pass. He, he, he always makes the right movement to get, he always wants to be on the ball. I always think that with young players, how how willing are they to get on the ball and make a mistake? How brave are they? And a lot of players, when they're young, they tend to hide away a little bit. They tend to, they're a little bit sheepish and they give the ball away quickly, but that's not what Rig is. He, he's immediately wanting to get on the ball. He's wanting to create things. He's always looking for the pass. He's got his eyes open. And really, you sometimes have to forget he's, what, 16-year-old, is he? I don't think he's even 17 yet. So he plays like he's 24, 25, do you know what I mean? And he's been in the team five and six years. So if that's what he's, if that's how good he is now, I know he's only had a few games, but he's only going to get better and better. But we have to manage him right, but he's only going to continue to develop. So... Yeah, hopefully. And I think really that's a good talking point as well. Why don't we start and use them more? Because there's not a great deal to play for. I know we're clinging on to the hopes of the playoffs, but I don't think it's realistic. Absolutely no reason why we can't be giving Rig more starts and, and, and developing them. And that was a perfect opportunity for me. Yeah, I was going to come on to that because I literally put more starts question mark next to his name on my uh, little notes list here. Uh, before we do that, Jack, just... Note that you've got to put a pound in the team swear jar for mentioning the B word. Um, <laughs> he who, he who shall not be named. <laughs> um, so more starts for rig is something I think, yeah, is definitely a thing. Um, the question is, obviously, who do you drop? Should Job still be getting on that pitch, Jacob? What do you think? Because I'm oh, sorry, for me, I, I, I literally... If you watch the commentary I did for this channel, my biggest cheer was when he took Job off the pitch. Just and to look throwing at, that out there. Look at our response when he did come off. It's not the fact that Job 
is a bad footballer. There is a player in there. He's still at the development stage. The lad's only 18 years of age, but, you know, he's tired. He's outspent. And the last time we won a game of football, he started on the bench and that was the 3-1 win at Plymouth. So what does that say? We went with that midfield three, which was Neil Equa and Barr in there. So, and he made more of an impact coming yeah. off the bench than starting. There we, well, he scored a goal, didn't he, mm-hmm. that game? So uh, for me, I just don't get the logic in starting him. I think, like you said, Michael, he'll be a much better option coming on when there's tired legs from the opposition when the game gets stretched. I just think starting him at the moment, um, because we're we're play, we're starting a player week in, week out at the moment at this moment in time where the manager doesn't well the head coach in Dodds, he doesn't know what his best position is. He probably doesn't know himself. Is he a box to box midfielder, a holding midfielder? Or do we want to because he's a tall lad. Um, do we want yeah. to go with his aerial threat in the box? But right now it's in terms of him being an overall midfield player, he doesn't offer enough, you know, he, he's not physical enough, he doesn't um, for me, you know, for an 18 year old lad, he, he lacks pace, you know, to, to, to run onto things when we try and break <laughs> that. And we're, we've got players fit right now. And th- most of our goal, a lot of the goals we scored this season have come from catching teams on the break. And that's the way I think we should be playing now till mm. the end of the season. I mean, because it's debatable when Roberts and Clark will be available again. But Job is not the right player for that. We need more energy levels in the middle of the park. Rig can provide that a tad more because he's got intelligence, a bit like Dan Neal, you know, to make that extra pass, you know, hold on to the ball a little bit longer. Job, even when he does receive it, he goes for the safe option. He doesn't take people on. He goes sideways and back. But that's a player at this moment in time who could be lacking in confidence. We could see a more confident Job next season. But right now, I think it will be more beneficial for him if he just stays out the start in 11 for the next yeah. couple of games at least. I just don't get the logic in playing it or potentially even because there was a stage, I think at the turn of the year, Bar instead of playing out wide, he was sort of slotting into a midfield three, which I thought worked quite well because he understands Neil and Equa's game. And we should be looking to go back to that and I think Job being on the bench for Saturday, I think, will be more beneficial personally. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I just think he seems to be one of those players that's more of an impact off the bench at the moment. Uh, Jack, uh, Emma joked with me in the um, commentary that we did. Has he got that he has to start every game in his contract? <laughs> what do wow. you think of uh, Job still getting starts after having underwhelming performance after underwhelming performance? Well, I don't know if it will be written in his contract, but I definitely think they'll be trying to, trying to showcase the youngsters that have the sell-on potential, absolutely. But I just echo yeah, well, what I think everybody everybody can see, do you know what I mean? You, you, you can see when Bellingham's playing now, he, he just it's it's not even his physical attributes, which Jacob's touched on for me. Mentally, he looks a little bit spent when he's getting the ball. He looks like he just doesn't want it, and he looks like he, he, he doesn't know what to do with it, and he just, yeah... It, it, if we'd had a bigger and better squad and a deeper squad, you know, with, with players for each position, we might have been able to get more out of him. But because he's been uh, in, in injuries as well, because he's been having to be asked to to play so regularly in quite a demanding league as well, let's not forget, you know, the Championship is a physical league. I mean, it's, it's technically nowhere near the Premier League, but it's a hard slog. You know, you play, yeah. you play eight more games in the Premier League and it's more physical and... Uh, you know, you tend to play the, you know, seemed as a threat by the opposition are probably going to get kicked and, uh, and, and physical a little bit more. Now, people will think, well, he should be used to that. And, and that is right, you know, but that, that's going to come in his game. Do you know what I mean? So to have yeah. it sort of demand of him so regularly, physically and technically, it's, it's going to be tough for, for the lad. And I think I, I think everybody can see, he could just do with, as Jacob says, two or three games on the sidelines and maybe off the bench impact sub 15 20 minutes to go if we if we do need him um i think you've got to try and got to try and work rig into the team you've got to make sure rig starting most games if not all games between now and the end of the season obviously yeah. try and manage him as well um if we can work out the formation for that maybe play him off the striker i don't know yeah jacob you want to be in there i just want to say cuz jacob's point was about his pace when i look at him i don't see a lack of pace 
you see it in all levels of football, whether it's from pub leagues to up to professional, it looks like a lack of enthusiasm for that pace. He's not trying to give us that pace. That's what it looks like to me. Well, in in Job's defence, if you are going to start him, if, if Dodds really believes he's a player over a space of time, will make the team a lot better, you know, play him in a more creative role. In the, pit, the last, in this bad run we've been on, you know, when he wants to receive the ball, he wants to receive it too deep and then make the runs forward, which I, I, I don't understand. You know, he, he should be in and around the box where he's looking to get a shot away. The, the one decent moment he did in the first half on Tuesday was when 09 got the ball. He made um, a run, which Semedo should have been doing, um, into the penalty area and got his head on. Um, a decent ball in and it almost went into the far corner, which, yeah, it, it's it sort of reminded me of the Job we saw at the beginning of the season where he was in and around those areas, like when he scored those two goals in that Rotherham win uh, where, where he got a brace and we won 2 1. So that's the Job we want to see and it, it will go back to that. But right now, it, he's he's worn out, he's, he's, he's tired, he's spent. And like I go back to, we don't know what his best position will be. I mean, the next head coach, we because it looks like we'll be a head coach for the next appointment, they could have completely different ideas of how they want to play him. So yeah. we could see a completely different joke altogether next season. Yeah, I've got two more little points on this uh, game, but Jack, do you want to go to the comments before you lose track? It's uh, it's streaming big time today. <laughs> 100 yeah, people stop. watching, oh, isn't it? It's starting to pick up. It's, I was a bit, uh, yeah, people are getting involved. So um, I'll try and go from where we were last time. Jim Nesbitt says, Ashish and Mundo gave us an attack and threat and some urgency, which was non-existent before that. John Nesbitt agrees with me about Rig. He says, unfortunately, he thinks he's going to be snapped up by a Premier League club. And then the Nesbitt brothers are just acknowledging that they are in the house, very much in the house, John and Jim. <laughs> um, Mick Coleman says, Rig is as fit as a lop and was easily his man of the match, taking him off was idiotic when we were desperately chasing an equaliser. Jim Nesbitt says, Patterson made some great saves and kicked it much longer than Mads Hermanson. Um, Jeanette Atkinson's put a question on, do you not agree, lads, that Job is a far better option as a number nine than any of the kids? I do think some of his best performances have been a little bit further forward, to be yeah. fair, this season. Mm -hmm. um, Emma Hansen, friend of the show, sometimes contributor, says, evening, lads. Harley Jones says Jack Clark won't play for Sunderland again. He's already sold. Well, it's it's looking increasingly unlikely that he will, but we don't know. He might get a couple of games up towards the end of the season. Um, SJ says, OK, Harley Speakman. John Nesbitt says, anything? has anybody heard anything about the speculation about the, the club being up for sale? Um, we might, might be something to talk about. Conrad Tank agrees with us about Bench and Job. Um David Jackson says Roy Keane is now apparently the favourite for manager. I'm not too sure on that. Um, he, won't, and... he won't want to work under this model. Not a chance. Yeah. Michael Trainer, yeah. championship's too hard for most of these players. Some of them don't care, like Equa and Hemia. Um, and there's a few other ones come in. So, yeah. Um, did you ask me a question before that, Mike? Or... <laughs> I've got no. Uh, no, I just said read the comments. <laughs> um, no, but I have just thought lastly on this um, uh, Leicester City game, we got Ballard back, which was, you know, despite the loss, you can see as soon as he's back on the pitch what an asset he is to the team. We've also lost 9 at the same time in the same game. So what do you think of that? We'll come to you first anyway, Jacob. Uh, Ballard being back, he said, what kind of impact does that have? Huge, mate. I... I stand by. If Ballard had played that Norwich game, we wouldn't have lost that game. Uh, that, that for me, it would it would have been a more. I mean, we had a good shape down Norwich, but we didn't have um, a commanding presence. You know, a real leader at the back because that the goal we conceded was just pure sloppiness from Hilda. Ballard would have been on that and cleared that ball like a flash on the day. Him being, but I I do think him and Seal. If they went as a centre back pairing, because we went for three against Leicester on Tuesday, we didn't go over two. I think it looks like we're going to play with a two now, with 09 being suspended at the weekend. I think that will suit us pretty well, to be honest, because it will allow us to um, play um, with more freedom further up the pitch and take more risks. Because I think if we if we start 
if 09 was fit, I think we would have gone with the same system again down S- Southampton. And that first 45 would be the same. We probably would have invited too much pressure. And up against a side who have scored a fair amount of goals under Russell Martin this season, I think it either would have been the case where we'd have got to half time somehow with Patterson pulling off brilliant saves or us being solid, or we would have just uh, caved under if we conceded early on. So I think because I f- I'm pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong, it was um, Seal and but the last time they played as a centre back pairing was that win at Hull on Boxing Day. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. My my worry is Seals did not look ready for that kind of position in the last game. It, his, it his, feels his like lack, a liability. His lack of pace frightens me, mate. It really yeah. does. And yeah, J- Jamie Vardy that first half, you, the way how Leicester set up, you know, trying to work the ball around our back line and the midfielders, you know, dropping a little bit deeper to make those three passes through. It was it was a field day for him that first half up against yeah. him. Yeah, it, it was it was worrying. Man of the match for the game, Jacob? Man of the match. I will go for... I thought Rick, Rick was brilliant. I have to go for Chris Rigg, but also for me, a lad who hasn't put a foot wrong all season and I think who will get player of the season uh, come the end of the campaign. Dan Neal was fantastic as well. Jack, Ballard's out. Uh, Jack Ballard's back, sorry, and all nine's out. We gain a centre back and we lose a centre back ish. Uh, <laughs> how much of an impact does that have? Positive that he's back and negative that all nine's going to go. We're going to be lacking a captain. Yeah, I mean, that's probably well, it has been our first centre back pair, and hasn't a Ballard and all nine. And the partnership that they have and the relationship on the pitch is probably the strongest that we have. So it is disappointing that we've lost one and then, and then got the other one back and then lost the other one as well. So now it's going to be probably Ballard and Sealed uh, against Southampton, um, which I don't know. I mean, Southampton, have, Southampton play Adam Armstrong up front, don't they? He's, he's quite quick up front. Che Adams as well, yeah. Yeah, Che Adams. Southampton have got a bit of pace up front. So I agree with Jacob to a certain extent. I think it will worry us, but I think we'll probably play quite deep. I wouldn't like to think we give them much room in behind. I think Southampton are probably going to have the ball. And we're probably going to try and have to counter attack as much as we can, um, you know, get get on the ball quickly and, and forward quickly. So that that's probably going to be the way. The only saving grace is that there might not be any space for those quick players to run in behind if we do play slightly deeper. And we have to mm. make sure that we get our line right because all it takes is one of them to spring the offside trap and the be in. And obviously, Pat has to be alert as a sweeper keeper in behind. But um, it is pointing. But, um, you know, Sealed has a chance to try and step up. To him. You know, a lot of people have actually wanted a bit of 9 I think 9 has been uh, a little bit hit and miss recently. He's been he's had some good games, but also poor games. You know, you're going to get an 8 or a 9 out of 10 from Ballard most weeks. So, opportunity to see what um, what Seal will be like. I think it'll probably be him and him and Ballard centre-back in, uh, as a partnership. Yeah. So, gives you, give us your man of the match before you jump onto the comments for us, Jack. Uh, well, I think Rig was Rig was the obvious one, but a special mention for Ashish when he came on. I thought someone that hasn't featured very much recently. He came on and he looked sharp. Uh, it's it's sometimes you're looking at players that have come on and you think that they're they aren't properly match fit and it take them a while to get up to the speed of the game. But I thought he came on and he he did look lively. Um, so yeah, special mention for him. But I mean, the obvious one from minute one till minute seventy or whatever it was that he went off would be Rig. He was. He was excellent, as we've already touched on. He was like an old head on young shoulders on the pitch. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'll um, I'll take a chance to get back onto the comments. I'll try and go from uh, from where I went before. Um, so Jim Nesbitt says he hasn't heard anything about the rumour that the club is going to be sold, um, but he has heard about the Stadium of Light potentially being sold by the council. So not too sure on that. I don't think the council maybe have the funds to buy the Stadium of Light, but I don't know. Um, Michael Trenner says Roy Keane won't work with Speakman and end up chinning him. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't want to put it past him. <laughs> Stephen Clark says Dodd says Job isn't tired. So if that's the case, what's going on with him? Um, David Jackson and Michael Trenner are having a bit of banter, I think. Um, SJ says we get the central defensive partnership that most wanted to see, Sealed and Ballard. Yeah, I think some people do probably want to see that. It'd be interesting to see how they, how they get on. Michael Trainer says, um, I think he means nobody who has seen Seal play can think he offers anything. Well, I think he's had some okay games, but I wouldn't say he set the world alight. 
David Jackson says put Patterson up front. We, we probably we, we've had everybody else up front over the last two years rather than a striker. So, Stephen <laughs> <laughs> Clark, not our club that's for sale. I think it's AS Monaco with who Juan Sartori is a vice president. Um, Mick Coleman says Daniel was asleep for a lot of the game. No way, man of the match for me. So maybe slightly disagreeing with uh, with what you said, Jake. He says doesn't think Daniel had that good of a game, um, and uh, we're nearly up to date. So yeah, that's where we are with the comments. Did you want to be in there, Jacob, before we move on? Yeah, I mean, um, I can understand what people are saying. They wanted for a long time to see Ballard and Seal as the, um, the centre-back pairing in the four, but I must say I thought he could have done a lot better for the goal we conceded on Tuesday. I mean, the, um, the height of him to allow Jamie Vardy, you know, to um, jump and get that header from the rebound, I, I thought it was just it was just lazy defending you know he wasn't alert enough for he could have been a lot stronger there personally in my opinion mm. I'll, I'll jump straight off the fence on my side that i don't like Silt. i think he's a liability more than anything else maybe that's time maybe that's experience and stuff like that but some of the challenges he does are ridiculously foolish for i mean one challenge he did during that game was through between the guy's legs through the back of him to try and get something on the ball it wasn't even like a goal scoring opportunity it was it, it was covered anyway he had no reason to do that so jack yeah um i just wanted to bring in one of the defender that i don't think we've, been, we've mentioned yet who i think has been pretty shot and recently yelder i think he's been absolutely Mm, well, poor, I, can't, yeah. I, can't, I can't say how poor he's been. I mean, even the game he played against Middlesbrough, I thought he took a while to get going in that. He was misplacing passes and he had a bit of a good spell and then everybody sort of got hyped up because he flew into a few tackles. But I think he's been really, really poor for, for a good few weeks now. I don't think he's had many good games at all. We haven't touched on the Norwich game yet, but I just wanted to bring up the goal that we conceded that at Norwich ball. last Saturday. I mean, if your Sunday league team conceded that, you'd be having a go at them, wouldn't you? You'd be having a go at yeah. the two defenders, never mind it professional team in the championship that's allegedly pushing for the top six and wants to be in the playoffs. I mean, 9 wasn't brilliant either, but for Hjelda to allow him to have two bites at the cherry to control it, and then he, he miss, the lad miscontrols it, and he still gets a shot away and manages to put it in, and we haven't got a tackle in, we haven't shoved him out of the way, we haven't been physical with him at all. So Yelda really looks to me like, at the minute, I mean, I hate to write him off because I would never write a Sunderland player off completely, but it looks like we've bought a bit of a dud there to me. I mean, the Leeds fans were warning warning mm. me on social media when they were saying, oh, you know, it, it, there's a reason he's not getting in our team and, and we're giving him to you. So I hope he proves me wrong, but I, I think he's been a real letdown so far. It is very early days, but yeah, not, not great at the minute from Yelda. <laughs> I still think he's better than Silt, so maybe try him as a centre back and uh, get Pembele on the pitch and see what he's got to offer us. Um, he won't let's... play on that side, Pembele. Not a chance. No, right but Hume back. would. Hume could, to be yeah. fair. Hume can cut in on his on his right hand side, but I'm not the best fan of Pembele from what I've seen so far either. Yeah, I don't think we've seen enough yet. We'll have to wait and see what he comes up with for this one. He'll probably go two at the back, no one dodds and throws all off our game. Um, mm. Jack, do you want to, you've already started, so do you want to quickly touch? We'll try and keep it brief because we're halfway through already on the Norwich game um, and your thoughts on that. Yeah, well, I've already obviously discussed the goal. I'll probably bring that in a bit later on when I speak. But I think it was just what I thought was it was a really scrappy, poor game of football that I, yeah. I thought was. I thought it was angling towards a nil nil. I mean, you're always hopeful that it's your team that produces the bit of magic or it's the other team that makes a mistake and you end up nicking a one nil. And it would have been a really, really good result. Obviously, we're, we're in terrible form. Any win we'll take. But for, for such a scrappy, poor game of football, I mean, both teams, I mean, the Norwich, Norwich team didn't play very well either. But 20 minutes to go, we started to look like, oh, hold on, we're going to be getting on the ball here. And we start to get forward. And you, 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 you had optimism that it was going to be us that nicked nicked the game, didn't you? It was going to be us that took a 1-0. So, to concede such a sloppy, poor goal and it was always going to be the type of game that one goal was going to win it either way. I mean, there was hardly any chance either way. I know we had the ball in the net that was disallowed. Um, so, to concede such a sloppy goal and lose the game in a really poor game of football, it, it hurt even more because you just felt like that should have been a nil-nil or, you know, yeah. or at least we should have got a point out of it. So, Really, really poor. And I just wanted to touch on as well, and I know I've spoken a bit already, but how poor I thought Hermia her was. I thought, in, in I was absolutely staggered. I was staggered that I saw the the uh, the team lineup on Tuesday 
and he was <laughs> starting again. I could not believe it because I've seen some poor Sunderland strikers in my time going back to the likes of Andy Gray, uh, you know, Kevin Kyle to a certain extent, John Stead, you know, Will Greg, obviously. you know, you, you're talking about them and you're thinking, uh, Lewis and me, that, that type of performance is up there in some of the worst. I mean, for a, for a striker in the championship, he doesn't hold the ball up. He doesn't press. He hardly ever runs and gets in box. He's not involved. And the stat for me summed it up. I, I don't know how accurate it was, but I saw a statistic that I think he only had seven touches of the ball before he come off. Now, again, I don't know whether that was first start or the full game or whatever, but he was appalling, appalling. And I just could not believe the Dodds started him again on Tuesday against Leicester. I was absolutely staggered. I know we're, we're short of options, but I couldn't believe he'd started him again. Yeah. Jacob, you've got your hand up, but we're going to you next anyway. What, what was that? There was a moment, second I mean, Jack might remember this, where I think it was, correct me if I'm wrong, it was either Neil or Styles got the ball, dropped deep, ran a few yards, was it turned and then ran a few yards and then made a beautiful through pass for Hamir to run onto it. And it, it looked like he had a parachute on his back. You know, mm. he didn't make, a, didn't make any effort at all to chase onto the loose ball. Now, if Rushin was on the pitch, he would have... You know, he, he may have not potentially got there, but he would have absolutely killed had himself a trying to. Yeah, yeah. With, with the centre half who was chasing the ball at the same time. I just don't get what people can. Is the excuse will be he's young and he's still in the development stage. But here's here's a thing for you. I mean, I'm I'm not his best fan either. I mean, considering he's been left out in the team, out the team since he's gone on loan to Hibs. But from the games. I think they've probably played about, had the same amount of minutes as each other now. Um, Hamir and Mayenda, I've seen more from Mayenda than what I've seen from Hamir in the, the appearances made so far. And we send um, Mayenda out on loan. Madness. It, yeah, I, I don't get it. Mm, madness. Uh, Jack, how can you mention terrible strikers for Sunderland and not say Milton Nunes as well? He's got to be on that list. Come on. No, but I think... <laughs> um, Milton Nunes has got a bit of a cult following, though, hasn't he? I mean, let's be honest, he's, uh, <laughs> he's about five foot two and came on giving it Mike Tyson style punches. But um, uh, yeah, it was, I just couldn't believe it for how poor he was. And I mean, so the, the one thing that Sunderland fans like to see that, that can, we can forgive players not being technically great. I mean, God knows we've seen hundreds of them over the years. But one thing we can't forgive is when a striker doesn't look like he wants to be there and he's hiding on the pitch particularly up front when, you know, you, you've got a team like us that's struggling for goals away from home and it's a tight game and the opposition are really there for the taking and you've got a striker we're, that's sort of high on the pitch. Crying out. We are crying out for a proper intelligent striker goal poacher because the bo the, bo the amount of balls in the last 20 games that we've put across the face of goal with nobody there is unreal. Yeah. You know, Darren yeah. Bent would Darren Bent would have scored forty goals this season by now. <laughs> I'll just go uh, just go on to the comments. So um try again, I'll try and pick up where we where we left off before. Um so Stephen Clark says, just worry how KLD and Wang can run the club with all these investments. Jim Nesbitt says Seal and Trent has did okay when both Ballard and O nine were out. He thinks Seal needs to play as a right back. Um David Jackson says he thought Rig was man of the match. Uh SJ should be concentrating on investing on our investing in our club, uh, and John Nesbitt agrees. He thinks they don't give a monkeys. Uh, Jim Nesbitt says rig man of the match. I think there's quite a common consensus about around Chris Rig being the, probably the best Sunderland player on the pitch of the night. That, me that means uh, he'll David get dropped. Says, <laughs> David Brown <laughs> says fans at sales last club says he lacked pace. Bellingham is demotivated because he doesn't have to work for his place. I think that's probably an element of that as well. He knows he's, he's, yeah. he's getting a, a pitch, getting a game. Uh, he's going to be on the pitch every. Uh, Every game. Sim Clark says, Do you think Dodds is too soft on the lads, hence why they're playing the way that they are? Not sure. I think you have to manage youngsters right and you have to, you know, blend them in and play them at the right times. Um, David Jackson, Rig and Mundell were the best two players. Uh Alessandro Alessandro Di Giancamilo says Clark sold the Lazio. Well, that would be an interesting one. I've heard he's got teams in the Premier League after him, but I'm not sure about abroad. But uh, well, they, they made a bid for him on deadline day, didn't they? That's yeah. I was think, that official, was it, Jake? I heard, I heard that mentioned. I, I don't so, know. Yeah. I'm pretty yes. sure they were in for him, yeah. Yeah. Uh, just a few more before before I pass it back to you, Mike. Jeanette says, Shelder was shocking. There was a good reason he was binned after 45 minutes from Leeds. I agree. I hope hope he proves me wrong, but the things it's not looking good at the minute. 
Uh, David Jackson says he doesn't think the thing is Jack he doesn't want to leave. I don't know who that is in reference to. Sorry, David. Uh, SJ says he doesn't think Clark will want to stay here if we're happy with mid table. Well, absolutely. I think it's it's all looking towards he's uh, he's moving. Uh, and yeah, that'll, that'll be enough for now. I'll go back to it later on. Yeah. So let's let's ignore the fact we're going to lose half of our good players at the end of the season. Uh, let's have a quick talk on these manager rumours. We've had Roy Keane mentioned in there and stuff like that. But the one I don't know about you guys, but the one I've seen poking up more often than not in the last two days is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Apparently, put his name in the hat. Um, what would your thoughts be on having him as a manager, Jacob? Sorry, um, head coach, head coach, head coach. Yeah, um, probably like for me, you know, like a bit like I, I just don't see him wanting to wanting to work under this current model as well. Um, he'll be wanting to make. So he was on a podcast recently that I watched, and he was upset at Man United that he wasn't allowed much say in the transfers that they were looking to bring in. It was all made by was it the recruitment team and he didn't get much of a say particularly he mentioned about when they uh, brought Ronaldo back and the way how he left also but yeah if, if that's how he wants his um managerial um stint to go um then he's not going to get much luck if he comes to us unfortunately because it's not uh the model that we're operating under at, at this moment in time um Another name that was has been bantered about this week and the last few weeks, I should say correctly, um, Scott Parker as well. I, I I wouldn't mind Scott Parker personally. I think he he's a good manager for this league um, to get out of to get us out of this league as well. You know, he's got experience working with young players. People could talk about you know the the Newcastle connection, but we're we're talking about fifteen you know 50, oh, 15, 16 years ago when he played, and I don't think he was there for. A long period of time as well, so that doesn't bother me too we, much. We had we had Bruce for God's sake. That's a bigger connection yeah. than him. <laughs> yeah. Parker, I don't think will be a bad a bad shout. I don't, but I think he'll be more realistic than um, Cooper because I don't think Cooper would want to come uh, under this mm. regime. I can understand why also Wayne Rooney was mentioned as well because he worked. Didn't he work under? So at Derby they basically had such an inexperienced squad a young squad as well because of the uh the financial problems they had at the time couldn't bring in any, any players and he almost kept despite a, a mammoth, mammoth points deduction he was close to keeping derby up and you know he just missed out but i can understand why his name's been linked but after his stint at birmingham um i'm put off by him to be honest as well mm. So, Jack, putting the uh, model aside, if 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 we accept that they're all going to work with Speakman, or Speakman's going to, I don't know, take the next bolt out of here, um, which of them tickles your fancy? <laughs> Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer, Roy Keane, Scott Parker, they're all being mentioned recently. Well, I'll go through them one by one. I think Roy Keane's an absolute no go. Uh, it's a recipe for disaster. You know, he wouldn't he wouldn't supersede control to anybody, uh, let alone people that haven't had any sort of football background. So I can't imagine Roy Keane ever take the job. And I probably wouldn't want Roy Keane for a couple of reasons because as much as I loved him the first time, I'm not a huge fan of managers as a players going back. So I don't think it ever works most of the time. The no. second time around, I think it's a romantic way to look at it. Um, and I don't think he's. I don't think he's done. When was his last managerial job? Managerial job? What? Twelve years ago at Ipswich. I know he's been assistant or anything, but I think Roy Keane's name gets mentioned every time Sunderland need a manager, which is quite frequently given how 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 much we go through managers, and every time it gets mentioned Roy Keane, and I don't think it's ever likely to happen. So that one's a no go. Ola Gunnar Solskjaer is an interesting one because he's done really well in Norway, and obviously he's managed a big football club like Manchester United, but. The Man United job didn't go that well from Rui. Really. I thought, he, 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 in my opinion, I think he was only kept on longer than he needed to be because he was a Manchester United sort of legend, so to speak. I think anybody else wouldn't have lasted as long as Solskjaer did in that job. Uh, didn't do that well with Cardiff when he was a Cardiff. Remember when he was there? I don't think he did that yeah, well. So couldn't, couldn't keep them up. 
Yeah, and then the, the next season afterwards and didn't do that well. So, I mean, I wouldn't be absolutely gutted if we got him, but he wouldn't be my choice. My choice would probably be Steve Cooper at the minute. I think he would probably be number one or Scott Parker. Scott Parker's got two promotions from the Championship recently, both in Fulham in the last few years. But I think their squads and their money was a little bit more, more you know, suited to getting promotion than ours was but I would I would have him but I would probably pick Steve Cooper at the minute ahead of him so Cooper would be my number one but probably Scott Park will be up there as my number two uh, yeah most part, I'd, I'd tend to agree with you with the um, managers and players coming back the second time round I think I've only got one that I'd accept right now and it'd be Big Sam I'd have Sam Allardyce he's proven at this level with teams with no budget with teams with big budget he's proven at this level so many times you know, so he's one I would take back. There's a lot of Premier League managers we had um, that people have mentioned in the comments, even that you'd have at this level anyway. You wouldn't, sit, you wouldn't grumble at them. You know what I mean? You can't judge what they did for us in the Premier League against what they could do for us at this level. I think. Do you want to uh, have a look what people are suggesting in the comments for the managers there, Jack? Yeah, it's always a it's always a, a topic to get people talking. Um, so just a bit on people saying about Clark leaving and Clark being wasted a little bit. I think everybody's pretty much resigned themselves to Jack Clark leaving. We've spoken about the figures, the, the main thing, how much are we going to get for him? Um, I'll move on to the manager's position. So Mick Coleman says Scott Parker hates SAFC. I'm not sure about that. I've never heard anything about that. I mean, as Jacob's touched on, the Newcastle link. Yeah, he played for Newcastle a couple of, for a couple of seasons, but it's not like he was a hardcore. I don't think he did that no. well at Newcastle when he was there, really. He moved on after a couple of seasons. and uh, Yeah, he's an ex-Newcastle player, but I don't think that link's that strong, as you've touched on, Mike. It's not like uh, Alan Shearer or Steve Bruce or somebody like that taking over. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's not like a hardcore... Newcastle. That's that's, that's two one. two pound in the swear jar because he just mentioned AS. What is wrong it, with just you today? Wind you up now, mate. <laughs> you. uh, John, Nesbitt. To end the season. John Nesbitt says he'd rather have Alex Neal back before Solskjaer. Um, don't think that's likely to happen either. When he walked out the last time, uh, Alessandro says Paolo Di Canio. <laughs> I, he I'm gets mentioned sure every again. time as well. <laughs> again, his name's usually mentioned. He'd um, like want to set KOD's office on fire, knowing him. Again, I think similar to Roy King, not the right personality at, at all to manage, uh, manage under this and model. And as well. You, you can just picture, like, even if he got the job and him sitting down with KOD and Speakman about um, future ambitions and the direction the club wants to go out, go down it would be a recipe for disaster you know you'll probably want to do what he did in his first team meeting put a boot a projector um during the meeting he'll request um i'm pretty sure i heard a story he was not happy about the coffee being cold when he he was manager as well if the coffee came late he'd be absolutely fuming so i don't know it's a recipe for disaster if he comes back not for his passion wise fantastic but yeah, he won't want to work under this model like Keane. It will be um, a terrible experience for him. There's a few more few more names being mentioned. Uh, KTM, not FTM, KTM. Uh, Parker or Cooper, Roy King's management skills wouldn't suit today's players. Mick Coleman says he wants Neil <laughs> Warnock on a short-term contract. I'm not too sure on that. I think long-term the next it. needs to be a long-term appointment. He is at Aberdeen at the minute, but I think Aberdeen's short term so he will be available in the summer but he'll also be turning 105 years old in the summer as well so um, long term probably not the uh, not the man for us John Nesbitt says he doesn't want Solskjaer he was hopeless and he's also saying Dodds is completely hopeless I think that's slightly harsh but he's you know I by you know by all by all by all stretch of imagination you know he lost all three you know at the minute but I wouldn't say Dodds has been hopeless so far I think that's slightly harsh um few more just before I hand it back to you, Mike. Uh, Jan Atkinson says the model must change. David Joblin says it's another three seasons in the championship. Uh, and he wants Eric Cantona, probably tongue-in-cheek. I don't think he's ever managed at all. Uh, uh, and, uh, and yeah, so uh, that's pretty much where we are at the minute. Yeah, well, some interesting suggestions there, definitely. <laughs> we'll wait and see. We know it's going to be someone we've never even heard of, no doubt. Um, Right, 
120 people watching. Thank you for being here. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button. There's only 39 likes. That's absolutely shocking. That's less. That's a third of you. Come on, rest of you, pull your finger out, hit that like button. About Let's get to over 100. Yeah, there's about 80 people commented in the last five minutes. Come on, drop us a like. <laughs> I know, hit the like button. Come on, it's easy to do. It'll cost you nothing. Membership does, though. 199 a month. Bargain. You want to get that too. Um, anyway, that's enough plugs. <laughs> we'll go on to the Southampton game. Um, before we go on to the game, I read a report just before. Um, don't know how old it is or you know if it's been poo-pooed already, but it says, as it stands, the game is still scheduled to take place on Saturday afternoon. Though, according to the Daily Echo, it hangs in the balance. The stadium will now be assessed for any smoke damage due to the fire. So we're hoping there is a Southampton game. Um, and we'll wait and see on that one. But we'll go on to the Southampton game, Jacob. What's the changes apart from 09 out? Obviously, what does Dodds do now? He's 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 rolled the dice three times. I just hope this ticket comes um, to good use. That's if the game it should go ahead. I mean, I mean we don't. But one thing is, I hope they make this decision soon enough before the fans start making the journey down because I know the um, the trains. Particularly if you're coming, even if you're coming from London, where I live, they're absolutely screwed going down um, on Saturday. So hence why we're, me and some other people from the London supporters, Brian, we're staying in Winchester the night before, which is only half an hour from Southampton. Um, I don't know about the North East, probably how long would that coach journey be? Is it eight hours? Jack, have you done Seven that eight? one, Jack? Well, I've, I've done Southampton, but I've done Portsmouth, which is Hampshire, the same county. I don't know whether it's you know slightly close, but I think it took us about six and a half hours. So it took us six, six and a half hours to six hours forty-five. So yeah, it's it's a it's a really really long day. If you go on the coach to Southampton, it will be you you'd be you'd be on the coach from probably five, five six o'clock in the morning, and you're not getting back till I would say midnight probably. So it's it's a hell of a long day for ninety minutes of football, and it's even longer if the game doesn't even go ahead. You can fly down to Southampton. So I don't know how many fans have booked flights. I mean, I'm not sure if they're running from, from either Newcastle or Teesside, uh, Pontyland Airport, I should say, rather than Newcastle. But um, yeah, in terms of check, was it? What did you ask me, Michael? In terms of changes, what, what's the what's well, the think, changes? I think he should look at potentially starting, considering that. Um, Normally, when we've had a midweek game, um, it was the same under Mowbray earlier. And he'll, he'll want to freshen things for the next game, considering they played midweek in terms of making a few changes. I think he may potentially give Mondo a rest and have Bar in. And um, definitely, I think Al Sheesh after that second half display should come into the starting lineup. And I think what he's got, he's surely got to do, he has to start rooshing over Hamir. It's it's got to be, um, mm. and play with a counter attacking setup. But do I try? I mean, it would it wouldn't surprise. I personally think I'd be open to dropping Hielda, moving Hume across to left back, and then giving Pembele a runner. Even though I'm not his biggest fan, but do I trust Hielda to be a fullback where he has to give us width on the left hand side, but also has to watch what's uh, been running in behind him as well. Nah, I'm, mm. I'm, I'm not convinced by that. But knowing what Dodds will do, he'll stick with the older. But if he's going to go with a counter-attacking setup, I think he, he may look to have a ball-winning midfielder in there, which is why it wouldn't surprise me at all. Even though I, I would personally leave him out, I think he'll want to find a way to put Styles in, considering we've got 0-9 out suspended and we have only two centre-backs fit. Yeah. Styles is like a utility player as well. Yeah. So, Jack, their fourth place. Uh, they've had two wins in the last five league games. Last time we faced them was September. We beat them 5-0. Mm -hmm. Equa scored two. Jack Clark scored. Rig scored. And Dak scored. So, that's two of the goal scorers out. So, <laughs> how do you think we'll fare? What changes would you make to the team? Yeah, well, I, I, I think I've already touched on. I think you know, Bellingham needs to needs to have a, a, a rest, shall we say? I dropped whichever way you you put it. Uh, Hamia, absolutely drop him. 
Um, and obviously there's a forced one with all nine being suspended. So who would I bring in there? Uh, it depends on what formation he goes. If he, if he's going to go with five at the back again, I think you know you, you, you'll probably you know you'll probably go with um, uh, probably Styles in uh, alongside uh, Yelda, and uh, the centre backs would be or nine and. Um, Sorry, not Yelda. Uh, centre backs would probably be uh, Ballard and Sealed, uh, and then maybe, maybe as Jacob says, you could possibly bring Pembele back in. And if you're playing Hume at left back, that would that would potentially uh, work with uh, with that. Uh, in terms of attacking wise, I would definitely play Rushen instead of uh, even Burstow instead of me. I think burstow has been a little bit hit and miss this season, but I think he offers a little bit more in terms of a physical threat. If you want to hold the ball up. You're not going to get that as much with Rushen. Rushen's more of a runner in behind and stretching defenders. So if you want somebody to hold the ball up at the minute, probably the best option is Burstow. And he's not brilliant at it, but he's the best that we've got. Uh, and dropping uh, Bellingham, I would probably be, bring either Barr or Mundell. I'll probably I'll probably go because Barr didn't play the other night, so I'll probably go Barr Barr for uh, Barr for Bellingham. So that, that's the changes that I would mm. do. And um, he might want to play uh, first off, you know, just a bit of physical threat up top and trying to hold the ball a little bit and take the pressure off because Southampton are probably going to have a lot of the ball. You might need an out ball, which as good as Rushin is, and he's the best of our strikers all around, he's not really that physical at holding the ball up. He's not that out ball as such, unless you're going to play it in the space in behind, which you could do. Yeah. I'd like to see Aushish and Mundell and Rushin up front. I'd love to see them three. I think that would be a winning combination for me. Jacob? One thing, particularly with um, people who have not been, particularly on social media, Styles his biggest fan so far. But I didn't think he had a bad game at Norwich. To be fair, compared to some of the other midfielders that played that day, I thought he was looking to, you know, be involved in the physical battles. I thought he was looking to get into the final <clears> third, <throat> particularly in the second half, and receive the ball in those areas in and around the box. And I think he got on the end of a Hume cross where he just couldn't control it and end up going out for it it was a decent opportunity went out for a goal kicking in but I thought th there is you know a, a capability to be a solid player in that role um, a ball winning midfielder but I think we'll look for someone who can move the ball a little bit quicker in the summer considering I think Styles is only on loan with an option to buy so it's whether we decide to keep him or not going forward yeah, I like the look of him. He looks keen. He looks like he's he, he battles for the ball. If, um, if I he think plays left back, no, no, I completely. Yeah, yeah. That's one game. he got absolutely ripped to shreds by that Ronald lad. Yeah, he lo he does. I'm, I'm afraid he does look like another on nine to me. He's a bit of a utility player. He has some great games, and then sometimes you think, where the hell is he? Is he on the pitch? So it's a bit all over the place that one. Um, yeah, so. Before we go on to the comments, um, Southampton's obviously rested all week because of the fire, <laughs> where we haven't. So that might affect your decisions here. Jack, score prediction. Oh, we're going score prediction already. Um, yeah, I think they're going to want to. They're going to want to give us a bit, aren't they? Because of the five 0 they're going to probably be stinging. That'll be back of the moment. Um, they actually went on a fantastic run after that, and then they've, they've lost a couple recently, but they have sort of picked back up. So I'm sorry, but I can't say who's getting another. I think Southampton are in a better, much better form than we are. It doesn't take much, but I think they'll probably have a bit too much for us in the final third. So again, I always say, I hope I'm wrong, but I can see it being 2 0 to Southampton. Sorry. <laughs> um, should I go to the chat? There's, there's been plenty of. Comments. Well, we'll, um, we'll get everyone's score predictions and we'll go in the chat because there might be questions well, uh, we can pass around. So, Jacob, your score prediction? How I think it will pan out. I think we'll stick with a so solid defensive unit. I think we'll keep our shape well. I think we could shock them and score an early goal from a set piece or capitalise on a on a mistake. And I think we'll we'll keep it tight. But I think their their pressure will force a defensive error from our from our side and I think we'll concede late on and I think it could be a 1-1 one, one draw 1-1 one, one draw right I'm going for a 3-1 win <laughs> just the because old, I can <laughs> I've, I've took over that prediction I'm having it it's mine <laughs> I think uh, if he plays what I've said and we have uh, Aushish and Mundell after how well they came on up front and we have Rusin as well I think we're going to have more shots than we can shake a stick at. 
We'll get three, maybe six. I'm going to go three, though, to be safe. So, <laughs> Jack, do you want to go to the comments and see if there's anything in there people want to ask before we say our goodbyes and stuff? Yeah, so um, just moving up to Southampton. Some Bowman says Southampton are on fire. <laughs> SJ thinks, same as I do, they're going to want revenge, and he thinks, as I do, it's going to be a, a, another loss. Uh a couple of comments still about the manager, Stephen Clark, Pep Linders, who's Jürgen Klopp's assistant, and DJ Sizzler, Watson, Phillips and Reed. Definitely, you've got no chance of that happening. Uh, John Nesbitt says, Southampton look like they're running for top two, so maybe the players are just preparing for the playoffs. Are they completely out of the running for top two? I mean, I know that the, the, the sort of few points behind, but I wouldn't say they're completely out of the running for top two. I think if they went on a, a decent run, they could still get there. Mm. Um Stephen, Trainer, Stephen Clark sorry, says, I just wish they would stick with a striker for a number of games. This this chopping and changing is no good. Michael Trainer says, thanks for the show, lads. He's, up, he's got to go. David thinks it's going to be another defeat, as does Jay Taylor. Jay Taylor says 3-0. Um, Paget also thinks it's going to be another another result, uh, another loss. He says six in a row, not the six in a row that we're used to either. Uh, David Jackson's a bit of positivity, Mike. You'll like David Jackson. He's in 2-1 Sunderland. So a bit more, bit more down your street. Jay Taylor says we're not good enough realistically. Um, SJ says it'd be shocked if we win. Stephen Clark 2 2. I think most of us would probably take that. I certainly would. Paget says 4 0 to Southampton. Wow. 4 0 to Southampton. As does Bob, Bob Bass, Bob Bass. If Southampton score, we don't have a Scooby Doo up front. 4 0 to Southampton. I don't think we'll get battered. I think that's a little bit. I think we'll hold our own. John Nesbitt says he thinks we'll be pleasantly surprised. 1 1. So he's agreeing with Jacob. He thinks it'll be a score draw. Um, and David Walker says 3-0 to Southampton and we'll be lucky to get none. So, bit of a mixed bag in terms of the predictions there, Mike. Bit of a mixed bag. Definitely, definitely. Well, we can only wait and see. Um, Jack, you're not going to this one, are you? No, I'm not. I did Norwich no. last Saturday and we, yeah. we, we, I didn't drive down, but my mate drove down. It was a pretty long, long day. So, I thought Southampton a week after, no, I can be doing with not a... Another another Saturday on the, the wonderful motorways of the United Kingdom. So I'm giving it a miss. Jacob, Mike, you I are, aren't you? I hope it's better. It was absolutely chucking it down at Norwich yeah. the other being the first half. There was a couple of lads I know who were sitting in the first five or six rows, Jack. They were absolutely drenched come <laughs> half time. <laughs> I was, looking, I, think, I was looking, I was a bit further back. I was towards yeah, the back, so I, I kept dry. <laughs> I think he'll be all right at Southampton, Jacob. There's a nice uh, warm area just in front of the stadium if you get too cold <laughs> it'll still be smouldering by the time you get there <laughs> literally well well if that's the case then the game probably wouldn't go ahead which i think for us fans the way we're playing right now we probably won't see that as a bad thing if if that's the case we'll have more players available if, if it does come to that from when we meet again but it should be fine for that i know yeah. there's talk of whether you know it's the game is is in doubt because of what happened yesterday evening but yeah i think was it southampton have tweeted you know about was it ticket exchanges already f for saturday which i think if if the game was game was highly in doubt they wouldn't have put the tweet out so yeah it looks like the game should be okay it, it's just it's just screaming out for for all the journalists point of view if southampton do batter us so you've got your headline haven't you saints on fire or southampton on fire there's the headline nice and easy so <laughs> hopefully we don't play up to that but that's it's crying out if Southampton do turn us over 3-0, 3 or 4-0, it's going to be Saints on fire. You can see it coming. Nice and easy headline for the uh, for the journalists <laughs> and the reporters. There you go. Let's not make their lives easier. Right, yeah. 100, uh, just over 100 people in still. Um, we've only got 64 likes, so let's get us up to 100. Um, uh, even if we've gone and left, you can still leave a comment and a like, no problems at all. Um, so on... Match day, Jacob will be down there. So if you see him, make sure you grab my pint. Um, I'll be doing the live stream as always, um, mumbling, tripping up, and celebrating our three goals. So that should be great. Don't forget to tune in for that. Uh, Jack, do you want to say your goodbyes? Yeah, uh, hope Jacob enjoys it. Everybody else traveling down there, if you are traveling down from the northeast, safe journey down. Hopefully, uh, we get something uh, and it's not so bad on the way back in terms of the journey. Um, and yeah, uh, see everybody later, lads and lasses. Jacob, as I always say, um, at the end of every show, um, if you go in, particularly before an away game, if you go in down, um, 
on Saturday have a safe trip down and for all the fans and players um, down at Southampton at the weekend, keep the faith. Excellent. Couldn't have said it better. Right. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you all in the next show. Bye.